The final thing that we'll talk about for feature engineering is a task called spoiler detection. So, often when you're on social media and you see people talking about a popular culture entity like a movie or a TV show or a book, there's this concept of spoilers. And so a spoiler is something that if you knew it, it would diminish your enjoyment of the work. So it might be some big plot event, it might be some fact about a character that the work, the movie, the TV show, whatever, tries to keep a secret so that you can experience the surprise of knowing this when it's revealed in the TV show, and you don't want to hear about it ahead of time on Twitter or Facebook or something like that. So, can we build a classifier that can detect when a sentence has a spoiler or not? The way that we're going to try to do that is to use a resource called TV Tropes. So TV Tropes is a website that has pages about particular characters and TV shows, and tropes that list a bunch of examples from popular culture. So for example, there is a trope called the absent-minded professor. And these tropes are themes that appear a lot in popular culture. And so an example of an absent-minded professor is Doc Brown from Back to the Future, the drunk mathematician on Strangers on a Train, and Dr. Bunsen Honeydew from The Muppet Show. So all of these are examples of the absent-minded professor, and the page called Absent-Minded Professor lists all of these examples. And there are also pages for individual TV shows as well. TV Tropes is great, I encourage you to check it out and, and see what's going on there, but what makes it useful for us is that it also provides some annotation for free. The nice thing about this data set is that people have gone in and labeled individual sentences of whether they're a spoiler or not, so you can view TV Tropes with spoilers either on or off. And so if you turn off spoilers and things like Han Solo arriving just in time to save Luke from Vader and by uh, Luke the vital seconds needed to send the proton torpedoes into the Death Star's thermal exhaust port is an example of a sentence that contains spoiler information. That is really critical information to the plot. Whereas diving into the garbage chute gets them out of the fire fight, but the droids have to save them from the compactor someone judged that not to have critical information that would prevent you from enjoying the movie Star Wars. So these have been labeled, and we're going to use these labels to try to predict for additional sentences whether they contain a spoiler or not. And so what's important about dividing the data into train and development and test folds is that we want to do it on shows. And so this allows us to generalize and not just learn, for example, there are a lot of spoilers associated with a particular character from a particular TV show, but to hopefully generalize about what, in general, makes a piece of text contain a spoiler or not. Otherwise, if we didn't do this, we may just learn that individual characters are associated with spoilers, and we're learning a lot about specific TV shows rather than generalizing to many different TV shows or books or movies. I'm going to show results using support vector machines, one specific classifier, but the results hold for other sorts of classifiers as well. So the first thing that you can do is you can just throw in all of the words as features. And so if you do that, uh, you get features like these over here, and you get an accuracy of around 0.517. This is a balanced data set, so our baseline of just guessing randomly is 0.5. So this is helping a little bit, but not helping very much. So one problem with this is that it's completely ignoring word order, and so you're just looking at individual words, which isn't enough to really understand what's going on in a sentence. Another thing that's wrong with this is that it's creating two versions of a word depending on capitalization. And so hate, in uppercase hate and lowercase, are two different words. So what we can do is we can make everything lowercase, and we can stem the word so that running and run map to the same feature, and if we do that, our accuracy improves just a little bit. Another thing that we can do is we can try to remove features that we don't think are going to be that useful. So, for example, very common words like is, and, things like that, these are often called stock words. So we can create what's called a stock list 
to remove all of those stop words. And if we do that, the accuracy goes up a little bit. And you can see the features are now focusing very specifically on the content words and being less distracted by other words that happen to appear in the document can help the classifier focus on what's important. Another thing that we can do is instead of looking at individual words, we can look at pairs of words. These are often called bigrams. And what we'll do is we'll add in a feature that puts adjacent words together. This is because we're able to capture features like kills him or surprises him. Phrases, pairs of words that may be associated with the kinds of spoilery information that we're looking for. But all of these features, these many, many, many tens of thousands of features can overwhelm classification algorithms. So let's try to prune them again. So if we remove the bigram features that don't appear very often or appear too often, we can now improve our accuracy even further, uh, allowing our algorithm to focus again on the things that are important and will appear the right amount of times. Thus far, we've talked about features that I've just thought up, and they work, and, and that's good, but how do you, in your homework, actually go about discovering these features? So one thing that you want to do is you want to look at the cases where your algorithm is getting things wrong and try to figure out, is there a rule, is there a feature that I could write to allow my algorithm to get this right, to expose something about this data point that it's able to latch onto so that it could get it right in the future. And if you're able to write that rule, if you're able to write a feature like what we talked about, you can then code that up, see what happens. And, and maybe it doesn't get it right. You can take a look at the feature values and you can say, oh ho, I'm capturing some examples that I didn't think I would. Let me refine my feature a little bit better to capture what I want to capture. This process is called error analysis. And this is important to make sure that you're capturing the examples that your algorithm is getting wrong and creating new features to account for those. But it's really important that you only do this on your development set. If you do it on your test set, you're cheating, and then the final numbers that you get won't reflect reality. It's also important that you look for features that appear often. If you only capture something that will cover one single data point, that won't help you. You need to find features that will touch a lot of data points. Otherwise, you'll need to create tens of thousands of features, and that's not a good use of your time. Another useful thing to look at is visualization. So we talked about visualizations. You can do visualizations for your features as well. So for example, you can plot your feature in true classes and false classes. Is there a difference? You can use that to get a sense of what's going on. You can try to find correlations between features, and maybe that could inspire you to create a new feature combining these two individual features together. But the moral of the story is that feature engineering isn't easy. You need to invest time to understand your data set, and you then need to figure out ways to encode the knowledge that you've won by looking at your data set into something that your algorithm can use effectively.